Thanks for joining me here at ButNowMinistry.org and today we are going through Keys to Understanding Your Bible Part 5 and this one's a good one because this one um, this key is probably one of the most difficult keys um, besides Jesus Christ according to the Revelation of the Mystery is just asking someone who says they're a Christian when the Old Testament starts and when the New Testament starts. If you just, and I'm Googling it right now on the uh, internet, I'm just typing in, when does the Old and New Testament start? And it's amazing the answers you get on the internet. You wonder if anybody reads their Bible. Um, we have one on here. It's called it's it's on wikianswers.com. Let's see what they say about when the Old and New Testament starts. It says here. The New Testament is that part of the Bible which deals with the life of Jesus and with the work of the Apostles following his life. It traditionally begins with the Gospel according to St. Matthew. So what it says on answers, it says it deals with the life of Jesus and it traditionally begins with the gospel according to St. Matthew. Okay? On Christian blessings, it says, When did the Old Testament stop and when did the New Testament begin? It says here, these questions about the two covenants are often misunderstood, overlooked, dodged, or even disputed in our modern religious world. Okay, so let's see. It says here, why is the subject about the difference between the Old and New Testament so important? What difference does it make? What difference does it make, right? It makes a lot of difference. Under grace, we come, we become members of Christ's body. Under law, they didn't because the body of Christ, the church, had not come. Hmm. You think there's some truth to that? What do you think? It says here, Saints under grace are united with God through personal forgiveness and redemption from the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary. Forgiveness and redemption came through Israel's final sacrifice. This final sin offering was the man Christ, the Lamb of God that redeems people from their personal sins. Jesus was Israel's final sin offering. Okay? The church was purchased and birthed through shed blood of Christ. The Comforter came as Christ promised the Spirit would come. Under the New Testament, saints of God, have a greater blessing called grace. So when did the Old Testament stop, right? Or when did the New Testament begin? At Calvary, when Jesus became Israel's final sacrifice offering to God. So at the cross is what they say, right? So, and we're going to see if that's true. Okay, so one says it's at the beginning of Matthew and or Jesus' earthly ministry. If we look at, let's see, if we look at ChaCha.com, it says the Old Testament ended at Revelation. And the New Testament begins with Matthew. So try to figure that one out. The Old Testament ended at Revelation. And the New Testament begins with Matthew. So there's the second one where it says it begins at Matthew. And then there's one that says the Old ended at the cross and the New began at the cross. Okay. 
Let's see what else we have here. When does the New Testament start? This one's Bible.org. The New Testament revelation about the coming of the person of Christ begins with the gospel accounts of his birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension. So the New Testament begins with Christ's birth, according to Bible.org. Okay? Let's see. One more. Let's just grab one more. According to New Covenant of Grace. New Covenant Grace. When did the Old Testament end? Let's see. The testament or will only comes into power whenever somebody dies. In essence, an heir cannot inherit if the testator is still alive. Unfortunately, they don't use a Bible. They use a translation. They use the Good News translation, okay, which removes the blood of Christ. That's also known as the bloodless Bible. But I guess that's okay. The blood, according to John MacArthur, it doesn't really mean anything, so it's not a big deal. But anyway, so they're on to something there, though, too. So we have two websites that say it's at the cross. The Old Testament ends at the cross, and the New Testament begins at the cross. And then we have three that say it starts at Matthew, or it starts at Christ's birth, or it starts during Jesus' earthly ministry. So, as you can see, I mean, you just go on the internet and you can see there's a lot of, a lot of um, confusion. But not only that, what's amazing to me is, is I just strongly believe no one reads their Bible. But we know on this station, this station, this website believes that the King James Authorized Version is the only Bible we have today in English. It's perfectly preserved and it's without error. And... If you don't have that Bible, you don't have a Bible. And most, when you're looking on the internet, do not use the King James Authorized Version. They use everything but. They have fallen prey to the minority text. Every new translation outside of the King James Authorized Version only uses 4% of any Greek manuscript. Okay. Now we know the Greek manuscripts aren't even, they're not perfect either, they're just copies and copies and copies. So you really need to make sure that you're fully persuaded in your own mind, Romans 14, 5, that you have a Bible in your hand. And if you think it is the Bible, that you believe it and that it's without error. Okay. If you believe the translation you're holding is God's word and without error, then hey, then stand on it, defend it. Okay. If you don't, then you need to study to show yourself approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2.15. And you need to be a workman who uh, needs not to be ashamed, okay? Because, like I said, if you just go on the Internet, you will see that many don't know the truth because, like I said, many don't have a Bible, and two, many do not study, Okay? So, what does the Bible say about all this? What does the King James Authorized Version say about the Old and New Testaments? Um, the Old Testament, the Bible clear, clearly says it starts in Exodus 19. Okay, The New Testament starts after Christ dies. The Old Testament does not start at Genesis. The New Testament does not start at Matthew. So, that insert that you have in your Bible, and you've probably heard me say this before, that starts before Genesis, it says it's the Old Testament, that is wrong. Whoever put that in there did not study their Bible, okay? Because when you read Exodus 19, that is when Jehovah God gives the Law and the Covenant to Moses to give to Israel, 
Okay, that's when he makes the law and the covenant with with Israel, and the law covenant is the Old Testament. Okay, the New Testament starts after Christ died. Now, if you go to Exodus nineteen five, it keep, it makes it very clear. Okay, the covenant, the testament, um, the law, the covenant, it's the same thing, on the authority of Exodus thirty four verse twenty eight. Okay, the law and the covenant is the Ten Commandments. And, we'll, and we're going to read that verse too. But Exodus 19.5 says, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, and this is the first time that he mentions the law covenant, okay? Because there was covenants before Exodus 19, but it did not include any law, okay? The law covenant, and then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And that's one thing that should clue you in that um, Jehovah God is clearly not talking about the church, the body of Christ. Because the church, the body of Christ, um, in Christ's body, there is no priest. Okay, there's no Jew or Gentile, there's no Greek, there's no Scythian, there's no bond or free. Okay, we're all in Christ, in the church body of Christ. So, when he's making a kingdom of priests, that is for the nation Israel, that is for um, them to inherit the kingdom. Okay, so that should, that should jump off the page that the church body of Christ is not included in this, okay? And then he says, These are the words which thou shalt speak unto, not the church, the body of Christ, but the children of Israel, okay? So clearly, the covenant, the law covenant, is given to the children of Israel in Exodus 19, okay? Exodus 34, 28 gives us definition of what that covenant is. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Okay, so the covenant is the Ten Commandments that he has given to who? The children of Israel. Now, when does the New Testament start? So we just figured out by just simply reading that the Old Testament starts in Exodus 19. Now the New Testament starts when? Well, Hebrews 9.15 gives us definition. In ages to come, a book written to Hebrews, okay, not the church, the body of Christ. Hebrews 9.15 says, And for this cause he is the mediator of what? The New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Verse 16, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. And verse 17, for a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Hebrews 9.18, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. And that is clear because since Jesus, in his earthly ministry, was born under the law of a woman, right, Galatians 4, 4, and he was a minister to the circumcision to confirm the promises of the fathers, Romans 15, 8, it is clear that the Holy Spirit miracles in Acts 2 did not come to Israel until the death of the testator. Because what does it say in Hebrews 9.17? Um, before there's death, the testament is of no strength at all. So right there, it clearly tells us that Israel did not get the Holy Spirit promise until after Jesus Christ died, right? Because Luke 22.20 also confirms Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So the blood has to be shed. The testator has to die for the New Testament to come in. And where there's no New Testament, there is no strength at all. Okay? So that New Testament had to come in for the strength to come in for the New Testament to come in and for those 
promises to be given to Israel, right? Because Jesus made a lot of promises to Israel, but it wasn't until after he had given them the better promises, right? That's the New Testament, the New Covenant, okay? And again, the Church, the Body of Christ, is not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, it's after Acts 2. It's after Acts 8. It's in Acts 9 when Paul receives it by revelation by the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not after man, Galatians 1.11. But, and that is Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16.25, according to Paul's My Gospel, Romans 2.16, and Colossians 1.25 and 26. Confirm that, that that is a new dispensation, Ephesians chapter 3. And our job today is to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, according to Paul's My Gospel, which is 1 Corinthians 15.1 through 4. It is not Peter... James, John, nor Jesus' earthly ministry, gospel of the kingdom. It is the gospel of the grace of God, which was only given to the Apostle Paul. It's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul declares it's the gospel in verse 1. In verse 2, it's how ye are saved. In verse 3, that Christ died for our sins. And in verse 4, that he was buried and rose again on the third day. If you believe Paul's my gospel, without works of the law, Galatians 2.16, without works of righteousness, Titus 3.5, and without any works, without any boasting, and it's not of yourselves, it's a free gift of God, Ephesians 2.8 and 9, you are saved. And then, once you're saved, you are complete in Christ, Colossians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. You are seated in the heavenly places, Ephesians chapter 1. You are, or I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, you've been given all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And Ephesians 1, 13, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise because you've heard the gospel of your salvation and you believed it. Okay? You are no longer an enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ Romans 5.10, when you believe in the death of him, you are saved by his life. And, better yet, he is not counting one trespass against you. 2 Corinthians 5.16-21 Because he who knew no sin became sin for us. Okay. So with all that being said, you have an insert before the book of Matthew that says, New Testament. That is wrong on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. There has to be the death of a testator for the New Testament to come in. And on the authority of Luke 22, 20, there has to be shedding of blood for the New Testament. So, so much for what John MacArthur says, that the blood has no redeeming work. The blood is what gives the New Testament to Israel. And the blood is what forgives us in Christ. Okay, so it's very clear if you read your Bible, Exodus 19 is when the Old Testament covenant law was given to Israel, never the church, the body of Christ, and the New Testator comes, the New Testament comes with the death of a testator on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. So those inserts, they don't even belong in your Bible. All they're doing is confusing people because they don't read. It's easier to read one page that says Old Testament and believe that that's where God would want it to be because somebody put it in there. And then it's easier to read New Testament and it's right before Matthew and believe that that's where the New Testament comes. But you have multiple verses in your Bible that confirm that that is not true. And again, this website is dedicated to God being true and every man a liar. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. Thanks again for listening. Email me at reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.